Joining me now is Mitch Landrieu, national co-chair for President Biden's campaign. Welcome to Meet the Press. Thank you so much for being here. Great to be with you. Well, let's dive right into that report. It was initiated by the special counsel appointed by President Biden's attorney general. Do you, does the campaign accept this report as legitimate? Well, of course, first of all, this was a 15 month investigation. The president and his team fully cooperated and based on the law and the facts, which is what lawyers and special counsels are supposed to look on, the conclusion was that the president had engaged in no wrongdoing, period, end of story. But unfortunately, that's not where the special prosecutor left it. He decided to add ad hominem, uh, gratuitous attacks about the president's, the death of the president's son, which everybody knows is just an incredible personal thing to him, as it is to any parent who's lost somebody. And then uh, extra attacks that even senators like Mitt Romney and, and White House counsel under Trump, uh, Cobb, felt was just ridiculous. And you're going to have a lot of other federal prosecutors that come out and say that. That's the thing that really stung the most about it. The most important thing to remember, though, is the president was found to have, have been engaged in no wrongdoing. Unlike President Trump, which has 91 felony counts pending against him. And by the way, in over uh, all the depositions that President Trump has taken in those cases, it says he doesn't remember or doesn't know over a thousand times. So this swooning over uh, whether or not the president remembered uh, the year that his son died and, and therefore is not fit to be president is just really sad and below the belt and unnecessary. Well, and just to be very clear, the report didn't say he wasn't engaged in any wrongdoing. In fact, it was quite firm in the fact that he mishandled classified documents. He just wasn't indicted and criminally charged. But let me follow up with you. The documents found in the president. Well, wait, wait, no, corrupt. Chris, wait, let me, no, 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 you can't, no, 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 I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna accept that premise. In an investigation, a, a special counsel determines based on the facts and the law about whether somebody engaged in criminal wrongdoing. And he found out that the president didn't. As a matter of fact, he's the only special counsel that's been engaged in this kind of activity that had to say, that he could not indict somebody. And that is, that is a fact. And so that's the big takeaway from this report from a legal perspective. Uh, from a legal perspective, that is absolutely right. He said he was not going to indict Thank him. You. Let me, though, ask this question. Because he which didn't is have the law the or the facts to do it. Right, well, right, but he did say that classified documents were mishandled, and he said that national security could have uh, been jeopardized. But let me, let me ask you this, because the yes, documents... But, but, Kristen, he didn't say national security. No, ma'am, I'm sorry. He didn't say national security was compromised, and you just, he you just heard from he the Secretary of Homeland been. Security, but, but it was not. And the facts and the law suggested that the president was not engaged in criminal activity. To be distinguished between the former president, who right now has 91 felony counts pending against him in four different cases. So let's just keep the facts right, and let's, let's not make false comparisons yeah. between the two, which unfortunately people do a lot of these days. Speaking of the former president, here is how President Biden referred to him. His storage of classified documents. He was asked about the fact that Donald Trump stored them at his private resort in 2022. Take a listen. How that could possibly happen, how one, anyone could be that irresponsible. And I thought, what data was in there that may compromise sources and methods? And by that, I mean names of people who helped or et cetera. And it's just uh, totally irresponsible. Was President Biden's handling of classified documents also totally irresponsible, given that they were found, for example, in his garage? Kirsten, what, one of the reasons why there was a special counsel appointed was to, was to gauge that very thing. You will also remember that Vice President Pence went through the same examination, and the conclusion was the same as it relates to Vice President Pence and then Vice President Biden. The special counsel concluded that the law and the facts and the evidence suggested that they could not bring any criminal prosecution against President Biden. That is juxtaposed to the 91 felony counts in nature, in tone, and in content. They're not even close to being the same cases. But that's not what the most egregious thing is about this report. It is this ad hominem attack that questioned the president's capacity. And I want to speak to that very clearly because I can testify, because I've been working very closely with this president for the past two years. I've been knowing him for 30 years. I have met with him personally. I have met with him with two people, five people, 10 people. I have been on trips with him crisscrossing the country, rebuilding uh, America based on this incredible infrastructure uh, bill that was passed. And I'm telling you, this guy's tough. 
He's smart. He's on his game. And as Secretary Mayorka said a minute ago, when you go on to brief the president, you got You better have your big boy <laughs> pants on. And and this kind of sense that he's not ready for this job is just a bucket of BS that's so Un deep, your boots will get stuck in. Yeah, uh, understood. But, but Americans don't agree with what you're saying. In fact, our NBC News poll found that 76 percent of voters are concerned about whether the president has the necessary mental and physical health to be president for a second term what is the plan to convince voters otherwise? Well, let's just say two things. This, this election is going to be about two men, but really two different visions for the country. President Trump, just the other night, uh, confused what day of the week it was. He has confused who the leader of North Korea and China are. He's confused the leaders of Hungary and Turkey. By the way, Speaker Mike Johnson was on the other day, and he confused Iraq and Iran. Um, and, of course, President Trump doesn't know the difference between Nancy Pelosi and Nikki Haley. And, oh, by the way, last night President Trump saw fit to basically dump on Nikki Haley's husband, who is serving in the military right now because he hasn't around. That's what he continues to do. So the people of America are going to have to make yeah. a choice. Are they for a guy like Joe Biden, who wakes up every day thinking about the people of America, thinking about how to lift people up? Or are they going to be for Donald Trump, who has already said, and you can believe him when he says this, even though when his lips are lying, moving, he's usually lying, that he is going to be engaged in revenge and taking us backwards. I think the choice is clear. You know what Joe Biden remembers? He remembers how to build 46,000 infrastructure projects. He remembers how to build yeah. one of the strongest economies in the world. He remembers how to make sure that the unemployment rate stays Look. as low as it has for 50 years and to create 800,000 jobs. And that is why, let me just finish, that is why the president says, watch me. And the president has demonstrated an incredible amount of accomplishment in a few short years that outpaced anything that Donald Trump has ever well, done, including creating 15 million jobs. People are watching him, and again, 76% of them have those concerns, and so do some of his donors. This is what the Washington Post is saying. Quote, top Biden donors were fielding calls and text messages from anxious Democrats, asking if other Democrats still had time to jump into the presidential race. When is Gavin getting in? Or how about Whitmer or Shapiro buzzed around Democratic circles over the last 24 hours? How do you respond to Democrats who say they want to see a change at the top of the ticket? I'm in the process of doing it right now and, and demonstrating that the president's accomplishment have really been second to none. And Joe Biden's going to get up every day. The one thing Joe Biden is never going to do is count on this. He is never, ever going to quit because that's not what he's done his entire life, notwithstanding the fact that, by the way, he lost another Mr. child early Mr. in his life and he got up and he went to work. And then Mr. he Lynch. had difficulty with his other son and he got up and he went to work and he's going to keep doing that. Uh, as we move the country forward. Very quickly, was it a mistake for him not to do the Super Bowl interview, to miss talking to as many as 60 million people? No, I don't think so. I think people really want to watch the Super Bowl tonight and, and, and think about football. They don't want to hear from a politician. So I think, he made, I think he made the right choice for himself at this time. All right. All right. Mitch Landrieu, thank you so much for being here on this Sunday. Really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.